Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So in recent videos, we've been taking a look at older or more budget-friendly CPUs to see what it really takes to run modern games. So I decided to use the Radeon RX 6700 XT for testing, and a lot of people pointed out, it's like, why don't you use an NVIDIA graphics card? NVIDIA has the most market share, that's what most people are using. This is actually correct. However, Steve from Hardware Unboxed figured out that the Radeon GPUs, especially under CPU limited circumstances in modern games, has significantly more overhead. So basically the Radeon cards can push older CPUs to higher levels. That's why I decided to do that. But I figured since I have the 6700 XT on hand, Let's see how much of a difference an NVIDIA graphics card versus the Radeon graphics card really has. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at here today in this video. But first, are you in need of a Windows 10 key for your new PC build? Well, today's sponsor, CDK Deals, has the deal for you. They offer great prices on games, software, and of course, Windows 10 keys. Just search for Windows 10 and you get an awesome price on this Windows 10 key. And for a limited time, you can get an even better deal by typing in GOG25 in the promo code for 25% off. Checkout is super easy with secure payments with credit card or even PayPal to make things as simple as possible. After payment is complete, all you have to do is just click on your key, click the Get Key button, there you go. You can also check your email for your brand new key. Now to activate Windows 10, all you have to do is go to search, type in Activation Settings, and go ahead and just go ahead and change key. And that's it, it's that simple. So now's the time to take advantage of this exclusive offer and get that extra 25% off by clicking the links down below and using GOG25 as the promo code. Now back to the video. And since I have the RX 6700 XT, I decided maybe I should put Steve's test to the test and see exactly how much difference there really is between the Radeon graphics and the Nvidia graphics. So I decided to borrow an RTX 2080 Ti. Timo from the Timo Tech YouTube channel decided to send that on over, so I wanna thank him very much for that. And the reason why I chose the RTX 2080 Ti is because it has similar amounts of VRAM, and in standard gaming benchmarks, the 6700 XT and the 2080 Ti are relatively similar when stock versus stock. So that's what we're gonna be testing out today. How much impact does the Nvidia driver have on something like the i3-10100, which in my opinion, as we found out in the last video, is overall the best value CPU here today for gaming or the i3-10105, which is its replacement. Alrighty guys, so before we get into it, I'm gonna go over the testing methodology and the test system used. Uh, the testing methodology is gonna be similar to what we've been doing in the other tests, but a little bit different as I'm also gonna be doing medium quality settings. We're really trying to push to see how much of a gap there really is and how much effect that NVIDIA driver overhead has. So there will be ultra quality settings, and then we will also have medium quality settings, and then we'll compare once we're all done. Now for the test system, I'm using the Intel Core i3-10100. This is the same CPU that we used. This is obviously being paired with the MSI Mech 2 RX 6700 XT 12 gigabyte, and the EVGA for the Win 3 RTX 2080 Ti 11 gigabyte. This was used on the Gigabyte H410M S2H motherboard. So this is an entry level basic motherboard that I got super cheap. Uh, I paired this with the provided Kingston 32 gigabytes DDR4 3200 CL16 kit in conjunction with the provided Kingston KC 2500 one terabyte PCIe Gen 3 NVMe. So for all the other specs, if you're interested, they are in the description down below. If you wanna check out any of these parts for yourself, affiliate links are provided. Clicking on those really does help out the channel. And I thank you all for your support on that one. Alrighty guys, now that we have all that out of the way, let's take a look at those benchmarks. So as per usual, kicking things off with Metro Exodus, this is the ultra settings, no ray tracing, no DLSS, none of that stuff. Should have mentioned that before, but no ray tracing. The 6700 XT comes in with an average frame rate of 121 and a 1% low of 94. The 2080 Ti comes in at an average of 123 FPS and 85 FPS respectively. So a little bit higher on the average frame rate, but the 1% low is a decent bit lower. 
Switching on over to medium settings, we have the 6700 XT coming in at 172 FPS average with a 1% low of 122 FPS. And that's in comparison to the 2080 Ti coming in at 154 FPS average and 109 on the 1% low. So we can see when we drop down to medium settings, the 2080 Ti does fall away a little bit further. All right, next up is Cyberpunk 2077. So the... RX 6700 XT comes in at 95 FPS average with a 1% low of 58. And then we have the 2080 Ti coming in at 83 FPS average with a 1% low of 52. So once again, we do see a little bit of a disparity there, but it's not super huge. Moving on down to medium settings, we have the 6700 XT coming in at 105 FPS average with a 1% low of 62. And that's in comparison to the 2080 Ti coming in with an average of 99 FPS and a 1% low of 61. So the 1% low on these are virtually identical, even though the 6700 XT does have a slight advantage on the average FPS. Moving on over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider with ultra settings, we have 95 FPS and 58 FPS as the 1% low coming in for the 6700 XT. That's in comparison to the 2080 Ti coming in at 91 FPS average and 57 FPS as the 1% low. So once again, the 1% lows are basically the same and the 2080 Ti just a little bit slower on average, but not a huge difference here. Now flipping it on over to medium settings, the 6700 XT jumps up to 96 FPS on average and 60 FPS as its 1% low. For the 2080 Ti, we're getting 90 FPS on average and 57 FPS on the 1% low. So a little bit lower than the 6700 XT, but it's not a huge difference. Not exactly what I was anticipating. Jumping on over to Assassin's Creed Valhalla Ultra settings, we have the 6700 XT coming in with an average FPS of 109 and a 1% low of 63 FPS. The 2080 Ti is coming in with an average FPS of 74 and a 1% low of 49. So this is a massive outlier here. This is, we're seeing a major disparity. Now, I don't know if it's the benchmark itself because the CPU does not say that it's being fully utilized, uh, but this is definitely an oddball and it is repeatable, unfortunately. I've ran the test many times. I normally do three but I did five just to be on the safe side, especially with the 2080 Ti. And yeah, that there, there's something funky going on there, to be honest with you guys. But anyway, on the medium settings with the 6700 XT, we are seeing 128 FPS on average and 87 on the 1% low. With the 2080 Ti, we get 95 FPS on average and 71 on the 1% low. So this is obviously a huge outlier. And honestly, I, it's just the game. It's just this particular game. Now, the final game of the benchmark is Watch Dogs Legion. So on the 6700 XT, we have 70 FPS on average and 53 on the 1% low. For the 2080 Ti, we have 63 FPS on average and 45 on the 1% low. So this is kind of following suit to what we saw before, where the 2080 Ti is starting to fall back a pretty good bit. Flipping it down to medium settings, the 6700 XT gets 81 FPS on average with a 1% low of 59 FPS. And then the 2080 Ti comes in with 74 FPS on average and 55 on the 1% low. So even though the average frame rate is a bit lower, the 1% lows are about the same. They're pretty similar. All right, so let's round this all up. So using the ultra quality settings, the 6700 XT on average gets 94 FPS and 64 on the 1% low. The 2080 Ti gets 87 FPS on average and 58% on the 1% low. So on average, the 2080 Ti is 8% slower than the 6700 XT and 10% slower on the 1% lows. Now, switching things on over to medium, we have the 6700 XT coming in at 116 FPS on average for all five games and 78 on the 1% low. And this is in comparison to the 2080 Ti getting 102 FPS on average and 71 FPS for the 1% low. This comes in at being 12% slower than the 6700 XT on average and 9% slower on the 1% low. Well, already guys, that was pretty interesting right there. Uh, obviously, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a heavily weighted test here and really showed some major disparities. 
That's the outlier. If you take that out, the difference between the 6700 XT and the 2080 Ti is mostly negligible, but that's mostly because even at 1080p with an i3-10100, neither the 2080 Ti nor the 6700 XT are completely CPU limited. So this test shows us a few different things that are very important. Number one, the driver overhead from NVIDIA it's not that big of a deal most of the time. Under certain circumstances, it will play a role, like ACV or Watch Dogs Legion is probably the better example, as the numbers were lower, but not like crazy lower than the 6700 XT. So it does play an impact, but overall, if we look at those averages, we're looking at about 10% slower. If you lose about 10%, that's not the end of the world. In reality, these GPUs should be going hand in hand. In fact, the 2080 Ti should technically be a little bit faster, but due to the CPU limitations, the AMD card does come out ahead. Now, let's be real. If you're using a CPU like the 10100 or the 10105, because in my opinion, they're the best budget CPUs to buy here today, and you pair them with equivalently like a five to $700 graphics card, you're gonna have some sort of compromises. But it's not gonna be that big of a deal if you go with the NVIDIA card. That's my big takeaway from this. I was expecting to see much bigger gaps, 10%, not that big of a deal. On the flip side, what's really interesting is the fact that most of the games still ran pretty equal between the two. Let's us know that a four core, eight thread, sub $100 CPU here today in 2021 will run modern AAA single player games. And you're still not going to be CPU limited that often with a five to $700 graphics card. That's actually really cool when you think about it. You can literally pair a sub $100 CPU with a five to $700 graphics card and you know you're gonna be just fine. So to me, that's the big win here. The big win is we don't need to spend a whole bunch of money on CPUs. You can go with Nvidia or AMD. It's not gonna be that big of a deal. This is just great news for all of you guys. I found this very interesting. This is very helpful. Like when I was thinking about upgrading my uh, RTX 2060, which I had paired with the 10100. I'm like, oh man, I have to go with an AMD card because obviously the CPU is weaker. In reality, you don't have to. There's enough juice in that CPU in modern games that it's not that big of a deal. So I hope you guys found this useful. I wouldn't be too worried about that driver overhead. If you have a faster CPU than a 10100 or a 10105, you really don't need to worry about these things. You don't, there's, there's gonna be enough headroom there. So if you have something like a uh, 10400 or 11400 or Ryzen 3600 or better, don't worry about it. If you wanna get the Nvidia card, get the Nvidia card. If you wanna get the AMD card, get the AMD card. Don't, don't think that it's gonna make that big of a difference for you. So, alrighty guys, I found this super interesting. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Were you expecting a bigger disparity? I was, I was expecting at least another five to 10%. Uh, there, but it, it's not. <laughs> but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. And if you like videos like this and you want to help support the channel, please smash that like button. It really does help out. Let's YouTube know that they should be promoting videos like this. And honestly, I hope this helps out some people out there that might be in that position where they're like, hey, uh, I need this because of X, Y, and Z. It doesn't make that big of a difference, boys and girls. So you're all good to go there. And that's really all I have for you guys here today. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.